my lovely, lovely imps. Today, we are gathered here to take a moment of meditation and thought. For today, we are hosting the Sky Burial of the Twitter Left. Now, many of you coming here today may have never heard of a Sky Burial, but Sky Burials are actually a type of burial that is used in multiple cultures around the world. Um, specifically, uh, most most famously, I suppose, uh, uh, in the in Tibet and uh, in uh, countries or cultures that follow the Zoroastrian religion. Um, a sky burial is when a body is prepared uh, and put out, usually on a slab or some sort of ceremonial uh, display. Um, and uh, and and uh, and then left uh, out in the sun uh, for vultures to feed upon. And in fact, um, there are a lot of uh, sort of religious symbols associated with this, and I can't claim to know them all or to be able to summarize them from every single culture. Um, however, uh, one thing that should be noted is that pretty much unilaterally, it is considered a good omen if the body is consumed by vultures. And let me say, of, 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 uh, of all of the things that we can say about the online left, the Twitter left in particular, uh, it is being consumed by vultures, okay? Oh, absolutely. There is no doubt about that part, okay? So uh, I do think that perhaps we can acknowledge uh, uh, that there was some blessings to be had, that there was a uh, no, there's no curse residing uh, any further in the body of the, uh, the Twitter, of the Twitter left. Um, imagine, Im true, Im as, as someone in chat says, true, imagine being so rotten and disgusting that not even a vulture would touch it. Well, see, um, before you get to do a sky burial, like the one that we are hosting together today, uh, uh, it is inevitable that some amount of rot is going to set in. And unfortunately, uh, it seems like a lot of rot did set in, even before we we were able to drag the dead body out into the sun to be consumed by vultures and so that we all might have peace. Um, and I gotta say, my fucking God uh, is the rot bad, okay? The rot is fucking rotten, all right? There you go. There's the fucking wise words from Demon Mama from tonight. Um, I have talked about the subject of politics, discourse, the left on Twitter for a really long time. In fact, um, at some point, probably towards the latter half of this, we might actually revisit an old video of mine. Um, that I talked about, and I wanted to just, I don't remember everything, exactly everything that I said in the videos. One of my oldest videos on the channel, on the YouTube channel, um, and I thought it would be interesting to go back and visit it and see what I had to say. Um, uh, and I see a lot of people in chat right now um, talking and dropping all kinds of things, being like, did you hear this? Did you hear that? And I just wanna be 100% clear here. Um, none of you are free of sin. None of you, if, if, in, unless, I mean, maybe some of you are. It is true that some of you aren't on Twitter. So it is true that some of you didn't participate in any of the shit that, that I'm like sort of referencing here, uh, that many of you didn't participate in striking wounds, but a lot of you absolutely motherfucking did. And I'm sure that some content creators are here as well. And some of you also participated in this. Um, and I think all of us, to a certain degree, every single one of us content creators contributed in one way or another, uh, but the degrees vary greatly. Uh, the degrees truly uh, vary greatly, okay? But the state of the Twitter left right now is uniquely bad. It is worse by far than it has ever been. And I've been on Twitter for a really, really long time. Um, I've been on Twitter in lefty spaces for literally years. Um, before I was a streamer, 
uh, I sort of just floated around lefty spaces online, finding people to talk to who I found were thought were interesting, finding recommendations on comments uh, or on content, and and uh, and browsing people's opinions on various subjects. And there has always been a streak of toxicity on Twitter. I think it's almost unavoidable. And in fact, um, it's something I've talked about extensively that the way that Twitter is structured uh, leads uh, to certain types of of um, of toxicity. Um, and I can explain that a little bit because I think it's important to um, explain. Uh, uh, Twitter has an algorithm that promotes engagement over basically anything else. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, more important to Twitter than engagement. There are all kinds of forms of engagement. And as it turns out, we live in a uh, politically turbulent times, which means that people are likely to share their political opinions, um, which means that conflict is a highly, highly, highly lucrative engagement driver. And you have to remember that uh, Twitter isn't about creating good content. Twitter isn't about promoting good content. It's about promoting ads. It's about promoting ads which need engagement in order for Twitter to make the money that it makes or used to make. We haven't even gotten into discussing the Elon Twitter era and all that nonsense. But in order to make any money, they have to drive engagement. And one of the ways to drive engagement is to drive conflict, to serve controversial tweets up to everyone. Uh, tweets that are likely to make people angry, make people want to speak their mind. And to a certain degree, this is a perfectly rational instinct from the users, right? Um, you see someone else giving their opinion, you say, well, I have a right to voice my opinion. But the problem is, is that, um, well, frankly, some people have really fucking shitty opinions. And not only on top of that, sometimes their opinions aren't just opinions anymore, but are just deranged forms of abuse. Um, and But those are all sort of flattened down into engagement. And when you add in some of the other aspects of Twitter and the way that Twitter functions on top of all of this, um, the fact that uh, threading, you know, if, you, if you're familiar with the term, the way that like, you know, the way that the actual tweets are linked together, that's called threading. Uh, the way that threading operates on Twitter um, it doesn't, I should say it doesn't really operate. Uh, uh, threads break into subthreads, meaning that you lose context immediately, okay? Um, it is, uh, it is, it is a, it's poisonous to any sort of genuine conversation. Now it's great for engagement, because as it turns out, if you lose all of the context of someone's statement, um, that becomes more likely to emotionally bother you. It functions as a sort of like a digital Rorschach test. Uh, you see something without the context and you sort of project what your interpretation is on top of it without being able to easily find everything else. And uh, Twitter's just really bad for that. Short tweets, uh, uh, super, super restricted character limit means that, you know, only so much information can be communicated. Uh, threading means, th the way that threading works means that you lose context almost intrinsically. Um, Killjoy40k says, last year was a perfect example, like a hundred tweet threads about 40 plus hour, hours of streams where 90% of the people actually commenting on the streams were reacting to something a, with a completely broken frame of context. It, it's deranging, it is maddening. It means that every person entering into a conversation is for the most part a real person, but the world that they are operating in is d different in a, in a drastic degree from the people around them. And, it, and the way that the pace moves on Twitter, the speed at which everything moves on Twitter means that uh, it gets toxic very fast and it gets hurtful very fast. And I've talked about this aspect, these aspects for a long time. Um, 
in fact, some of you, maybe some of you are new to my audience, and if you're new to my audience, you should press subscribe because I would love to have you come to my streams more often. Uh, I talk about all kinds of topics. We laugh a lot on this stream. We talk about heavy subjects. We talk about light subjects. We talk about a lot of stuff. It's great, and we usually have a really good time. Um, but if you're new to my stream, you may not even be familiar with this old, this like ancient meme from my channel that's been around forever, um, which is the imps code. Uh, the imps code, uh, I, I, for a while, had a reputation for being kind of annoying about talking about the imps code, but I haven't talked about it as much recently because, well, because I don't care as much about Twitter as I used to. Um, the imps code was designed as a sort of uh, off the cuff rule of thumb to help you enjoy Twitter better on a technical level. And I'll tell you the imps code right now. I immediately stopped discoursing for the reasons I just explained. Don't do discourse. You can't actually have an actual discourse with somebody. There's no dialogue to be had. Just don't do it. Don't engage in it. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, M is memes and creams, um, which are rarer than ever, I should let you know, on Twitter. Uh, in the current state of Twitter, uh, when was the last time, like, you really saw like your timeline full of funny memes or creams. You guys should know what creams are. It's pretty easy to figure out what that is. Twitter was famous for a while for being a really good place to find, let's call it adult entertainment, okay? Um, memes and creams. Uh, you always want to do that on Twitter. Twitter is great for memes and creams. So I immediately stopped discoursing. M, meme and cream. Uh, and then of course we have P which is promote. Uh, and promote means if you have a show that you're making, if you have a piece of art that you're making, if your friend has a piece of art that they're making, if you have a fundraiser, promote that shit. Twitter is not very good for promotion of that type anymore. It used to be really good for that. Um, but uh, but uh, it's not so good anymore. And then of course, S, which was slaughter, your genuine opponents in the arena of ideas. And this one, I always made sure to stress that it's about dunking on and slaughtering your genuine opponents, people that you don't have any hope of a dialogue with, people that you don't care about at all, that you have nothing in common with, or that are your abject enemies. Nazis, uh, hardline conservatives, uh, trad cats, whoever you're, whoever the people who are trying to take you out are, go ahead and have fun. Dunk on them. But the important part of that rule was that you know who your, your enemies are. And, um, I just wish more people would have adopted the imps code. You know, it would have been nice. Um, Twitter in recent memory has become the most miserable website in the entire world. And don't fucking lie to me. If, if any of you here um, in my chat are gonna be like, oh, I still have fun on Twitter, you're lying to yourselves. I see the timeline. I see what you all are fucking posting. I see the group chats. My entire uh, uh, Twitter social network, all of the spaces that, uh, that, 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 I inhabit on Twitter have been nothing but weeping and gnashing of teeth for weeks, for arguably for months. And of course it has gotten worse under Elon Musk. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, Elon Musk it deliberately uh, uh, cranked up the controversial uh, part of the algorithm. He wanted left-wing accounts to be served to right-wing accounts. He wanted right-wing accounts to be served to left-wing accounts, um, which in theory, if you're like a, you're trying to be like an enlightened centrist is, is, you know, um, is, is understandable to a certain degree, but you have to remember that not everyone wants to be subjected to, uh, like, uh, 4chan tier humor, uh, that's making fun of Jewish people on a regular basis. They, they don't want to be subjected to that shit and they shouldn't have to be. Um, but they have been. Um, on Twitter, more and more people in the Twitter left have been served this hateful garbage, and that's that's what they see. 
they're being fed uh, uh, deranged rants by Charlie Kirk and Matt Walsh, and then they pr they comment on it, and then everybody else sees it, and then everybody else comments on it, and it creates this horrible cycle of negativity and anger, and it doesn't really have anywhere to go, because it's Twitter, after all. It's not really meant to change the world, it's just meant to give you ideas and let you connect with people. Um, but honestly, uh, it goes far beyond this. The online left in recent memory, um, has become, not the online left, I shouldn't say the online left, I should specifically say the Twitter left. Um, it does, however, I will point out that the Twitter left does influence the rest of the online left because a lot of the people that you know, a lot of the influencers and whatever that you know are still hanging out and spending a lot of time on Twitter, um, giving their takes, uh, getting into fights on Twitter, um, getting into drama on Twitter. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and so it has this, this bleed out where like all of the stupid garbage and the misery that's on Twitter is like flooding out into other spaces. But it really reached its apex recently. Um, and I have to say, I found it disgusting and pathetic and sad. Um, and uh, I'm mad about it. Uh, I've been really mad about it and I've been feeling really fucking terrible about a lot of things that I've seen lately, um, on on so many sides, and if and and I'm gonna be clear here, I am not talking about specifics right now because I want literally everyone, every single person that is still in any way taking part uh, uh, in this like horrific and nightmarish toxic space, to do some serious introspection. I'm 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 serious. I know. I know that I'm like probably going to risk coming off a little bit, like a little bit preachy here, but holy fucking shit, if there has ever been a time to fucking look inside and seriously reanalyze your behaviors, and yes, I mean fucking all of you, um, this is the time. Because, uh, it is, it has reached a level of toxicity that is truly unbearable. It is a, a level of toxicity that feels choking. Um, Nuts says the woke skulls started it. You want to know what's really funny that I've noticed in recent days is that um, there's a whole lot more woke skulls than there ever has been. There is a whole lot more fucking fragile little snowflakes than there ever has been. And a lot of them are people who love to use the word woke scold. It's something I've been seeing um, so much lately. So with all due respect, fucking shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. Sh seriously. Um, y there's people here who want to be like, oh, they did this first. But trust me, I've fucking seen the threads. I've seen the derangement that people have engaged in on all sides of every single one of these stupid, asinine, time-wasting, moronic, toxic, painful, uh, 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 cancel culture-y, uh, bullshit. It's embarrassing. It is truly embarrassing. And, and not just, uh, uh, not just embarrassing on like a, oh my god, that's cringe level. It's embarrassing on an almost existential level. To the degree that I unironically believe that the only way forward is for the Twitter left to pass on. It's time that, that's why I'm having this burial here today. Because at least for me, the Twitter left is a dead thing. And it's time that we acknowledge that it's a dead thing. And you might have noticed, I barely post on Twitter anymore. Most of what I post on Twitter is random reactions to memes, is little wholesome content. Somebody posts a little ooh-woo thing and I say, you're doing great, champ. And then I promote a couple little things here and there. And over the last few days, I've literally deleted everything and gone back to Mastodon again for full. 
Um, but, uh, but I can't even escape it anymore. Even without tweeting, the last four days, I mean, I haven't streamed in, in days. And, uh, and yet, uh, uh, and, and, and part of the reason is because every single day I log on and all my group chats are choked up with the most toxic fucking stupid shit. People are not thinking straight. Uh, I have seen people that I otherwise think are fucking fantastic behaving like motherfucking assholes. The cruelty that I've seen is laughable. And the fact that, that people are tossing around the word like woke scold and tender, th tender queer and I have done that too, because trust me, I certainly have some problems with woke scolds and tender queers and whatever. I think that that type of behavior is shitty. But I gotta be completely honest. Like I said just a few minutes ago, the uh, it, it seems like basically everyone has become their own little form of a woke scold. Everybody's scolding each other. Everybody is pretending that every single word that is said is some is somehow has some secret meaning. Um, and then it's provoking people into ridiculous behavior towards one another. And then people are excusing people on their own side of things. They're just literally looking the other way. And I, 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 I just, and, 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 and it's crazy. It's super crazy. One of the things I've seen the most of recently, um, one of the things I've seen people say so frequently to the degree that it concerned me is, well, this person is a piece of shit, so what does it matter? And of course, there's never really a definition for piece of shit. Um, I've seen like numerous posts of people saying, well, you know, I thought X behavior was bad, but then I found out this and that makes it okay. This sort of like weird post hoc rationalization bullshit. And you wanna know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of being a fucking Christian. It reminds me of the way that Christians will find, um, will do mental gymnastics to convince themselves that they are spreading God's love while they're actually just tearing into one another for no real reason whatsoever. And again, if you think that you're not one of the people who's engaged in this, fucking think again. Seriously, think again. Because I have seen it all the fuck over the place lately. I have seen people acting like bitchy comments are the same thing as being a fucking Nazi. I have seen people act like, uh, like, uh, jokes are 100% legitimate and it doesn't matter what was intended there. It is unfucking believable People have lost their damn minds. Uh, hardcore. And to a degree that uh, I think is genuinely tragic. Stakes are high right now on a political level worldwide, but especially in the United States. Shit has gotten really fucked up in the United States, and I think pretty much everybody on the left, even liberals, can acknowledge this. That um, things are really fucking crazy here right now. Um, it's always been crazy here. America is a crazy country, but lately it's been particularly ridiculous. There was a um, an in insane ramp up in in this sort of violent rhetoric from the far right. Um, there is this this hate campaign against queer people that is just ridiculous. There's these book bans rolling through on mass. It is it is a very high stakes political situation, but guess what? Twitter isn't fucking politics, not in and of itself. And guess what? Your uh, disliking of someone being wrong about some obscure drama that you can never even get to the bottom of is not the end of the world. And in fact, it barely fucking matters. Anyone else filled with a creeping, with a creeping sense of existential dread? I think so many people have. Have we forgotten? that we live in a time of plague? Like, unironically, we are still, right now, we have not exited the plague era of the United States. We have lived through a plague. 
a actual literal plague. And yet, uh, instead of that promoting, instead of that encouraging people in my peer group to greater acts of of charitability, to uh, to be a little bit more forgiving, to be a little bit more kind. Instead, it has uh, 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 pushed people to fuel that pain into the worst ways imaginable. And I'm not trying to like sit here and toot my own horn, okay? Because God knows that I've gotten involved in some drama, okay? But this year especially, and of course, and last year as well, uh, I have been making a definitive and, and clear, if you watch any of my content effort, to be more patient with people, to be more charitable to other people, even those who have fucking hurt me. And I wish other people would at least fucking think about that. I wish that at least people would consider that fucking fact. Because that is not what I see. And it is genuinely depressing. It, it, it makes me disgusted to be associated with this space, whatever this space even is. And it also makes me embarrassed to see how much fucking the toxic cesspool of Twitter has crept out into everything else that we do. And I think some a lot of my anger is at streamers. Um, because I'm a streamer. And I know a lot of streamers. Um, and I get mad because um, so much of the streaming content right now is people lashing out in their misery. Uh, this sort of self-referential, uh, uh, incestuous, uh, 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 react to react to react to react to react things. And trust me, I'm not fucking hating on react content. God knows I've had a lot of fun reacting to things. But there's also a tone and a, 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 a goal issue to be considered. Um, that these reactions have become more and more competitive, more and more hostile, less interested in, in actual meaningful discussions or progress at all. And they've become more uh, uh, con consistently more interested in insults and, and pain and, and cruelty just literal cruelty, the cruelty I see recently in uh, online left spaces generally, but especially on Twitter is just fucking beyond compare. Do you think that it's to drive interaction? I think it is to a certain degree. And, um, but I also think that, um, I think a lot of it is because, you know, people have convinced themselves that the only thing that sells is drama. And, um, to a certain degree, they're right. And I can't help but feel a lot of anger at the uh, at the, the general, like, populace of these political streaming spaces, which are so hungry for blood. Um, something that I am proud to say that at least a lot of people in my community do not engage in. There are people here who do that. There are drama frogs, no doubt. Um, but my community, uh, has my, my, my discord and the community that I've encouraged around my stream has never been built around drama ever. Um, and I am proud of that part, but so I don't want to scream at the imps too much. Cause you guys really have, I mean, you guys have kept me in check at times. You've kept me calm at times to the degree that, like I said, uh, my imps are famous for being some of the people who are actually able to bridge some of the divides in this space. I've mentioned this. I've read off the comments from creators that um, from creators that have felt an incredible amount of positivity radiate from my chat, from me encouraging my chat to go be positive on their videos and give some love that I've had since fucking day one, a rule that says imps only raid with love. And I am proud of that. I don't want to yell at my imps too much, but at the same time, uh, I lurk chats. I watch and see how people react and what people engage with. I have come to see that over time, 
this entire space has trended more and more towards incestuous drama baiting, towards this sort of like bridge burning mentality. I talked about this recently, about how I've seen so many people just excited to see people ruin their relationships. And to me, that demonstrates that there is a misanthropic streak in these spaces that wants people to hate each other, that wants to feed into the worst aspects. Um, and I should be clear um, about all of this. Like, there are people who, in my opinion, are worthy of hate. I think it's okay to hate uh, bigots, genuine bigots. I think it's okay to hate genocidal freaks. But um, that's not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about righteous anger. We're talking about people um, just fucking spinning narratives about each other, uh, taking statements that are technically true, removing them from all context, and using it to drive a, a, a ever, ever increasing, shrieking, horrifying uh, torture campaign against psychological torture sometimes, what is done to people. I'm not just talking about infighting. Infighting is one thing. There is always, I've said this a hundred times, I'll say it a million times more until the day that I fucking drop dead. You can't fix infighting. People do disagree. But there's a difference between infighting and like sectarian holy wars, okay? You go and look at like the uh, the Protestant Reformation or whatever, okay? And you see that all these like Christian factions would literally burn each other at the stake over over disagreements like over when baptism should be done. That that's I'm not making that up. The Anabaptists was a movement and people got fucking tortured and murdered because they had a slightly different opinion on when baptism should happen. And I feel like we're reaching a point like that in certain aspects. I mean, the Twitter left has already reached that point and surpassed it, where people are just, um, they're just deranging themselves. And it feels, um, as, as a content creator uh, who recently has, uh, uh, has, you know, for the most part, minus I guess I got involved in that, that uh, fight between not so erudite and and President Sunday, but uh, I, I feel like that was just a re I, I was reacting to that and then I gave my opinion and I didn't try to prolong that. I didn't comment about it crazy on Twitter, uh, even though people did say crazy things about me. Um, I have genuinely tried to stay out of this fucking shit. The most recent drama, the one that all of you know about, that some of you are posting about in my Discord, some of you are posting about in my chat right now. Um, like I've, I've actively avoided it. I've completely and utterly gone no contact on this because this shit is fucking, uh, it feels like I'm being gaslit. And it feels like I'm being gaslit by people that I otherwise trust. Uh, and I think that people are justifying um, lashing out at random people because of perceived loyalties, because of, of, of overstated harm, uh, because of hyperbole. Uh, it's like uh, you get punched by somebody else and then you decide to punch someone else because you think that person was defending the person that punched you. And with all due respect, I think people need to get real. I think it's time for a change. I think it's time that we send the Twitter left uh, to the world beyond, that we allow the vultures to pick apart the rotten meat if they so desire it. And at least for me, I will, you know, say goodbye uh, to that particular part. And keep in mind, this should not be interpreted as a why I left the left, that's insane. Um, I don't believe that if you have a spine that you leave the left. A left as, is, a, is a descriptor for a broad set of political beliefs. My political beliefs are my political beliefs. Um, but the, uh, but the Twitter thing, 
Yeah, exactly, Ashmar. A bird burial for the bird app. I just, guys, like, I just, I look out there and I see, like, I know that, like, everybody has a right to respond to whatever. Like, obviously. I don't think that people should not speak. But, like, don't we realize that there's, like, a reverse effect happening? where nobody can talk about anything right now without being perceived as having taken a, a, a specific side. I know that I feel this. I have felt lately like there was a, a, a lump in my throat because if, and it didn't used to be this way, um, the tension was not this high. In the past, you could have an opinion on a discourse and it wouldn't mean the end of the world. Some people would disagree with you. You might have a little argument, and that was it. But now, literally every single opinion is seen as some sort of betrayal of some faction and nobody has any control over it. You don't, I don't, nobody does. And this tension is then being used as the justifying factor to go even harder on other people. The shit that I've seen fucking people doing to each other is, is I can't even believe it. It makes me cringe. It makes me cringe the way that I've seen people behave lately. Just so terrible. And it and you wanna know, like, to be a little bit fucking egotistical and a little bit arrogant here, you are watching my channel after all. You are here listening to me preach at this fucking funeral for the Twitter left. Um, but I get frustrated because um, when I, because when I do put the heart into it, when I do fucking uh, uh, take the time to measurably talk about something like I did with the Arsler discourse. Um, I feel like nobody listens. I feel like nobody cares because my take wasn't drawing a line between two groups of creators because I wasn't picking a side in a fight, even though I had a very strong opinion that I communicated very well. And that's, that's disappointing for me. It's disappointing that we're missing good opinions. We're missing thoughtful opinions, including my own, if I don't say so myself. Uh, Bazinga. Bazinga. Um, but, uh, but we're missing that because of, uh, because for, for what? For like, to satisfy some weird, uh, pathetic, cringy drama lust? So that, so that like the, the Twitter left can replicate the behaviors of spaces that fucking crashed and burned. You guys realize that like uh, drama farming, blood sports, these things failed. Have you seen the blood sports community? Have you seen the drama community? They don't fucking exist. And the reason is because they're unsustainable. They don't work. Incestuous drama farming doesn't work. It hurts people and then they leave. Relayer says, uh, we don't know each other. That's true. And that's part of the problem. A lot of the people in this space don't actually have any social connection with one another. And this is true between creators too. There are a couple of creators that I have genuine connections with. Some of them I know IRL, other ones I have connected to extensively off stream. But for a lot of creators in these spaces, it is just posturing. It is just deciding which side of, of a micro culture war that you are on and sort of declaring that publicly, the consequences be damned. But that's parasocial. That is not a social connection. You are not defending your friend. You're not sticking up for something that you believe in. You're basically just farming content. And what's worse, you're not even farming content because most of the time, these fucking conflicts are happening on Twitter where nobody's making any money, where nobody's growing anything because Twitter is crashing and burning in real time because Twitter is bungled from a technical level all the way to a spiritual level. And I really want this to change. I, I, I 
personally, I need it to change. Uh, I have no desire to be engaged in these asinine, childish, and stupid conflicts. I'm all, you guys know, I am all for calling someone on their bullshit, okay? You should know that. Of all the people in this space, you should know I've always been willing to even call out my friends when I think that they're being bullshit. But not everything is worthy of that level of response. Not everything is worthy of a freak out. You guys know, those of you who've watched my channel for a long time know that when I do a drama mama, I call it drama mama, but let's be real. It's not even a real drama show. I go in and I try to find the truth of a situation to the best of my ability. I get all of the receipts to the best of my ability and I try to explain it so that people can actually understand the context. My drama mamas all this whole time have been a secret psyop, a secret psyop to try and teach people to seek context because without context, there is no meaning whatsoever, none. And I don't do it perfectly. I don't say that I do it perfectly, but I at least make an attempt and I make a strong attempt. And my goal was to challenge people to, to ask, is this true? Is this claim fucking true? Is this claim accurate? Or is this being decontextualized to create a narrative? As someone who has had her entire career decontextualized for the purpose of building a narrative. The narrative that, do you guys remember when there was an ongoing active narrative, many of you won't, that I was transphobic? That I was, and the reason, now you might go, well, how would, how would that be reasoned? How would you reason out that somebody who spends most of her time talking about trans rights, explicitly arguing for trans liberation, how is it that I am transphobic on an essential level? And of course the answer was that, in their mind, that if you actually went and got the context, the argument was, well, because I support self-ID, that is invalidating towards a binary model. And I'm basically, basically they say, that's basically the same thing as saying that you choose your de gender, which is basically, quote unquote, the same thing as saying that uh, being trans is a choice, which is basically the same thing as saying that being trans is a lifestyle, therefore demon mama transphobic. That was a running narrative for a long time. So trust me, I know what it's fucking like to have my entire, all of my words and everything that I believe decontextualized for the purpose of creating a narrative that benefits somebody else's fucking pocketbook. It's something I'm very sensitive to. It's an endless line of extrapolating in incorrect points out of under in other incorrect points. The funny thing is that most of the time, there are truths to be found in these narratives, but those truths are decontextualized. You don't have, people never go and look for this shit. They never go and seek out what the context is. And what I had hoped to encourage people to do was to do more of that. But I am only one person and I am a small creator and I know my size. I am able to acknowledge my, you know, where I am in this space. The decontextual, you know, people call this context collapse. Um, they call it context collapse. And uh, it's about, it's a, and there are actually techniques that can sort of trigger context collapse. Um, ones which I have become intimately familiar with. But I see this happening in real, in rapid real time. And what's funny is the faster it picks up, the more people who are willing to jump to conclusions, the faster the pace of the conversation accelerates, the faster the content schedule accelerates, the more likely you are to suffer context collapse. Because, oh, if I don't say something now, well then what if bad things happen and I'm proven wrong? Well, uh, you know, somebody I trust is saying it, so it must be true. Yeah, it's a FOMO, exactly, Retcon. It's, it's rough. And uh, like I said, it's reached a point of, I think, uh, almost unsalvageability. I think the only real way forward is to build something new. Uh, 
and uh, Somniostatic says, as somebody who lurks literally everywhere on the left, I've never felt worse about the state of morale in these communities. It's bad. We need the morale now more than ever. But it is so hard to uh, to get people to listen at all if you're not fucking canceling somebody, if you're not fucking saying that something is the end of the world. And there are some issues that have a desperate need for for severity. Um, it, like, I, I think many people here can acknowledge I've made a structured case and I will continue to do so for the, the urgency, the importance of fighting hard for trans rights in America right now, that there is a ongoing genocide against queer people more generally, but specifically right now, the target of the most of this is trans people. There is a push to, to remove our ability en masse to access healthcare. I think that's really important. I think climate change is really important. I think race, race discrimination issues in America is incredibly important. These issues are incredibly important and we need to use our energy towards those things. It is it is genuinely and unironically depressing. Um, and there's all kinds of contributing factors. Like I said, we're still, we're still in the uh, in the, uh, thankfully, it seems to be, to slowly be lowering. Uh, we're still in a pandemic. We're still in a plague. Um, Twitter, which was once a place of a lot of fun. There was a lot of fun to be had on Twitter. Guys, do you fucking, I remember, I remember Twitter a couple years ago. I had a good time on Twitter most of the time. There were still times where I got wrong, but I remember there was a period of time where if you avoided discourse, you would still have a good time. People would be talking about interesting things. You would see the news. And obviously a ton of changes have happened at Twitter, like a ton. They've completely changed the way the content algorithm works. There's been some good times, but uh, the, the Twitter left is done. And I need you all who are here listening to this to uh to listen to that to understand that uh vultures and maggots feed on dead flesh if you continue to feed on dead flesh consider that you might be either a vulture or a maggot um do you think there will be anything for the online left in general to rally around in the near future yes yes absolutely but there, there, but there has to be an accurate, um, and not an accurate, there has to be a genuine and high effort attempt to change the focus. There, people have to take it in themselves and say, nope, it's time. The time has come to change behavior. This is not working anymore. People, including you, the audience, has to be ready and willing to make like a, a slight change. To, to, to discourage this type of fucking heinous shit and to not participate in it yourself. Um, because there's definitely, there's so much to rally around. There's so much cool stuff to dive into. There's so much fun to be had. What do you suggest people do with the time they would spend on Twitter? Anything. Hell, uh, even Mastodon is better than Twitter. I know that some people have issues that Mastodon is, tech is technically a little more difficult to get into. Discords are better than Twitter. Any of these places are better than that. But most of all, maybe spend the time that you would otherwise spend on Twitter um, seeking out people's genuine opinions because you don't get them there. I know that it's tempting to spend time on Twitter because it's an, it's easy to parse, but you don't receive people's true beliefs on Twitter. Very few people are able to communicate their true beliefs. Most of the people who are who are able to sort of successfully use Twitter, and I don't mean successful for their own personal gain, I just mean like artistically uh, as a messaging system who are able to actually communicate their message on Twitter, do so by convincing people to leave Twitter and see other things. 
there are all of these communities that want to thrive, that want to be more than just uh, horrible, cruel bullshit. Holic Master says, the one good thing that came out of the online left, for me at least, are all the cool friends that I made. Well, the cool news is, we aren't mourning our friends. We aren't mourning anybody. No person died. It's just that this weird conglomerate that we call the Twitter left is done for. It is not being used effectively. The Twitter left has, for the last week, been paralyzed torturing individual people. And I mean a lot of individual people. I'm sure many of you have a name that pops into your mind right away. Um, but I'm not kidding you when I say that in that it is just the social space is torturing individual people. <laughs> Retcon says it's time for the game facts left. True! Unironically though, there's more productive shit on game facts. And the reason why there's more stuff on game facts is because people actually make guides and post them on there. People are making something. They're helping one another beat a game or whatever. The thing is that there are connections to be had and you can have fun using social media with other people. Those people that you've met, those people that you've forged actual social connections with still exist. But tell me that I'm not correct in saying that the social spaces that you inhabit, if you're one of the people who's been on Twitter recently, tell me that I'm wrong in saying that your social spaces have been fucking toxic as sin. That all those people that you otherwise like have found themselves caught up feeling uh, like you're in a hostage situation to comment on every fucking discourse that rolls around. Sock Dunn Left asks, I'm about 10 minutes behind stream. What culture shifts do you think that pundits can encourage to yield slower con conversations with greater conceptualization? We have to fight against the drama cycle, which means uh, content creators themselves have to be willing to take a deeper look, to react more slowly, to take their time, and to ask themselves when they're about to engage, especially I would say this is especially true when you are engaging with somebody who might be on your side. Take the time to figure out the context and ask yourself, is this person a terrible person? Is this person uh, somebody who just I just disagree with? Is this somebody uh, uh, who I could perhaps have a conversation with? And secondly, I want to, I think that pundits need to start building actual social connections with one another. They need to start collaborating on projects more often, on projects that are positive. You want to know what was one of the most inspiring things I've done? The fundraiser that I did with President Sunday, which, if you'll recall, actually had a lot of uh, fun drama in it fun drama that didn't end in any result in, in any burning uh, bridges. Nobody, no bridges were burned. There was conflict, even between people who don't like each other. But what came out of that event was a positive outcome and strengthened social connections. <laughs> a couple of months ago, it was like, I think it was around Christmas time. No, actually, I think it was literally that stream. It was literally that fundraiser stream. At the end of the stream, President Sunday, Vosh, uh, 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 Doe, and Chariot, uh, and I think Lucy, Ducky Lucy Hayes, were all just hanging out in a chat, laughing their asses off. And I have a feeling that all of them walked away from that feeling better and that all of the people who saw that, some of you might have even seen that, probably had a really fucking good time. And that is building actual social connections. Pundits and, and, and streamers can lead by example. Building coalitions. And that doesn't mean not fucking, um, that doesn't mean not like you have to agree with everybody or you have to hug everybody you don't like. Um, it's, it's, 
it's it's more about choosing your battles more wisely. It's more about taking the time to get context, taking the time to try and understand uh, where people that you otherwise wouldn't understand are coming from, and sometimes choosing not to make drama out of everything, even if your opponents are doing that. I, I think sometimes that the the mentality that all drama must be covered, all drama must be responded responded to, actually leads to worse outcomes for all parties involved. Um, some dramas are better off ignored. Killjoy says, I think it's important to learn what's an entropic argument, which is just one that's there to drain your en energy and frustrate you, uh, and also what is actual activism. You know, we're all entertainers in this space. We do some activism as well, but we could all learn to, to we could all benefit from learning how to do a little bit more of the entertainment. Um, and I think that uh, we would have more opportunities to do actual activism. And we'd have a whole lot more original content too. Skunksy says, can you be specific? Um, no, I don't have any desire to be specific because um, it applies to basically, what I'm saying here applies to basically every single fucking drama that's unfolded in recent memory. Um, most of the actors that you are all angry at, with very few exceptions, um, uh, 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 probably didn't do anything that, that was as bad as you thought it was or that you say it is. And uh, additionally, uh, furthermore, uh, a lot of the people that you support have also been behaving like assholes. I want you all to think about this. I want you to have doubts about the way that you've, behaving, you've been behaving because I think now is the time for people to have a little bit of a fucking crisis and go, have I really been behaving good or have I been unintentionally participating in toxic cycles? Everybody's got to make a living, okay? But like, uh... But like, you don't win. I don't know. Maybe, maybe at the end of the day, uh, I have too much hope for people. I've considered that many times. I've, I, I am not an optimist uh, all of the time. Um, <laughs> or most of the time, even. Uh, and I know that there's a lot of people as self-interest is always going to be important and most people here are here because they are it's their work It's their craft. It's the thing that makes them money, but like uh, Drama farming becomes incestuous it has a it, it, it makes you money in the short term and it kills everything positive in the long term and um, what it what it does is it eventually requires people to derange themselves. They have to um, invent drama where there isn't drama. They have to turn small things, they have to turn molehills into mountains. Annie Gal says, isn't that contradictory? Wouldn't you say that some of the people uh, we hate didn't act that bad and, and the people that we support are acting like assholes does not work when you're trying to appeal to all sides of the conflict? I, I don't know. Think that through again. I think that, pe that people have been more than willing to forgive uh, the people that they already like and have been more than willing to jump to conclusions with the people that they already don't like. And I don't, ex like I said, I don't expect everybody to uh, to to I don't expect everybody to hug and kiss. I don't expect everybody to uh, to fucking uh, like everybody else. I don't believe in that. I don't think that that can happen. But I'd like to think that we can choose our battles a little bit better. That we can choose our battles collectively a little bit fucking smarter. And if we are gonna fight, make it fucking a, a fight that makes sense. 
Like, like for example, uh, somebody that you don't like supports a hashtag that you don't 100% agree with. Is that person uh, like, uh, is that person like uh, the same thing as a Nazi now? Is that person like a fascist or whatever now? Or maybe they just have a different opinion on that hashtag. Is it is it really fucking worth like jumping to just unfucking believable levels? Like I mean, I'm not kidding you guys. Like I've seen some of the most ridiculous shit being peddled about people for the most inconsequential disagreements. I've genuinely I've seen huge content creators in recent days uh turn a nothing disagreement into a fucking explosion. And it's, I'm tired of it. I'm fucking tired of it. Thank you for the ban. Appreciate that. <laughs> Leftist Cov 22. I'll be smoking that demon mama pack. Can't wait for you to be removed from the internet. You are just a fascist now. It's literally that simple uh, as are all of you in the audience. Obviously a troll. Metal Murphy says, something to raise your spirits. You recently helped a friend of mine raise enough money to make the move to her new home. We successfully did so this past Friday, thanks to you in this community. Imps, you hear that shit? You hear that shit? We helped somebody's life get better. That's what these communities can do. It's not all about that. I'm not trying to say you need to do a charity drive every single stream. I'm not even saying that it's about charity. I'm just saying that these spaces can be fucking cool. They can make you feel better if we make that decision. If we choose to... Listen for the motherfucking signal. If we filter out the motherfucking noise. Not telling people not to fight. I'm not telling people not to disagree with each other. I'm telling people to fucking take a deep breath and touch some motherfucking grass. And I mean that in the mental and spiritual sense, okay? Take a breath, think about the things that you're gonna engage in and if they are worth engaging in. God knows I've put so many fucking things aside. <sighs> it sounds like you're talking about people gaining levels of maturity. Well, it's hard to say that because while there are a lot of young people on the left, young people have to learn from other people around them. They learn from their peers, but they also learn from people who aren't young anymore. And it's important that people are actually able to build relationships of example, that people are able to build relationships of like mentorship, and that people are more importantly just able to build actual social social connections altogether. And that's what I want to encourage my viewers. I have 700 people, over 700 people watching right now. Hell, we have like almost 800 people watching. Yeah. We have almost 800 people watching right now. Build social connections. Make a real effort to build social connections, not parasocial connections. Connect with the people in these audiences. Enjoy this content, of course. I'm a streamer. I'm not going to tell you not to have fun. I fucking love streaming. I love watching other people's streams. But we gotta, ha we, 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 we have to be having an okay time. We have to stop whatever this fucking horrible nightmare that we found ourselves wrapped up in on certain sites. We have to fix it. It's not tenable. So I'm encouraging all of you who are listening now to make a serious effort. Look for the context. Build a little bit in of a margin of error for other people to the best of your ability. And also, build actual social connections with one another. Social media, but specifically Twitter, is a place of unfathomably shallow connections. 
The connections that people make on Twitter most of the time are they disappear within minutes. You probably can't even remember all of the conversations that you've had in the last couple of days on Twitter. If you're involved in discourse, you don't even remember the people you were engaging with. Stop them. Take that energy and put it into having a real conversation or sharing some memes or laughing or looking at some art and talking about it with people that you actually have some kind of connection with. And if you don't have people that you have a connection with, seek them out. Everybody knows my Discord is one of the fucking coziest places on the planet and I'm not the only per person who hosts a Discord. Discord.gg forward slash Demon Mama. People have been chatting like crazy in there. It's like bumping every single day. And mine isn't the only one. Discord is mid nuts. You are a, a absolutely miserable wretch and uh, we love you, but let's be real. Whatever you have to say about connecting socially is probably people should do the opposite. I'm a bully to you. Yes. I feel like such a boomer for not really getting discord. It's the, it's just a popular place to connect with people. It's a bunch of chat rooms. You just, a server is a collection of chat rooms. Uh, and some servers have overlap with other servers. Some of them don't. Um, but you just go into the server and you, pick the place that's most interesting to you. And unfortunately, like all technology, there's a bit of a learning curve, but once you learn it, there's a lot of great stuff to have. Oh my God, it's just game facts. It's a series of tubes, that's all. Yeah, exactly. Spooky Star says, to be honest, in my experience, it's garbage literally everywhere that leftists can co congregate online. I don't use Twitter and I have been completely fucked by this on other platforms. Doesn't that just tell you that we need to try even harder? Doesn't that tell you that this this prolongated fucking sermon that I'm funeral sermon that I'm giving is even more important than ever? If lefty spaces online suck, whose fault is it? It's us. We're the ones who make these spaces. And it's up to us to be the ones who say, maybe I'm going to hold my tongue a little bit. Maybe I'm going to take a fucking chill pill for a minute. Maybe I'm going to take a breather. I do think that uh, in recent memory, uh, a lot of very influential content creators have sort of given in to their worst impulses with regards to drama. Um, and I don't entirely blame them. I get it. Um, conflicts are tempting. And especially when you're fucking mad and you want to get into a fight with somebody. But, um, and sometimes that fight is totally justified. I'm never going to say that nobody has a right to get in a fucking conflict with somebody else. God knows. Uh, 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 I don't think that, like, I am, like, the anti-centralist. I'm the anti, like, everybody needs to follow the same rules. I don't believe that at all. Um... I don't want to repeat myself too much. I just think that it's time that we fucking reanalyze how we're choosing our battles. Yeah? People should smoke more weed? Yeah, maybe. There are so many really good people in these spaces, okay? There's a lot of people I don't like, but there's also a lot of really fucking good people. There's a lot of people who are just really fucking good. And that doesn't mean they don't make mistakes, but mistakes aren't the fucking same thing as being a bad person. People should metaphorically smoke more weed. There we go. And at least for me, 
Uh, I've been making an effort for a long time to spend my energy here on YouTube where I can do stuff like this, where I can have long form discussions with my community. I've been uh, making an effort to uh, post on my Mastodon where I can sort of share my thoughts, um, which, you know, you can find me at, um, you can find me at uh, uh, masto.anarch.cc forward slash demon mama. Um, that's where you can find me. I'm, I'm over there. I post long form thoughts over there. And soon I'm gonna be running my own little blog which just will give you guys more stuff to read and talk about. Um, but to end this all up, to wrap this up, because I've been rambling for a long time and, and I want to make sure that this lands home, the current state of the Twitter left is, is it's death. It's done. It's over with. Whatever we decide to build going forward is going to be something new. And I want to encourage us to build something that doesn't fall into the same traps, that doesn't fall in to the content-brained, conflict-driven focus, that instead, uh, if nothing else, at least that we can have a good time. Let's fucking roast some conservatives, for fuck's sake. God knows there's enough of them. God knows there's enough of these motherfuckers saying heinous bullshit. Let's fucking roast those assholes. Those guys really have some problems. So everyone, let the vultures eat. They're eating for sure. I can say that much for sure. The vultures are having their fill of the rotten and stinky flesh of the uh, of the na of the of the Twitter left. Let's take all that energy that we wasted being miserable on that shithole site. Let's stop letting it flood out into our other spaces. Let's say goodbye to this fucking bullshit. And let's build something new from here, okay? Sound fucking good? Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. And it wouldn't be, uh... It wouldn't be fair if I didn't wrap this uh, uh, up with something a little more final. So, real quick. Yes. Let's have less of this, okay? Let's have less of this, all right? Let's have less of this. Everyone, please join me in a momentary salute. The Twitter left did its best, and now it is a stinky, rotten, bloated corpse being eaten by vultures and maggots. Let us all send it off with a small drop of honor together. On the edge of the crater Like the prophets once said And the ashes are all cold now No more bullets And the embers are dead Whispers in the air Tell the tales Of the brothers gone Desolation Devastation What a mess we made What when a mess we made wrong. When it all went wrong Watching from the edge of the circus for the games to begin gladiators draw their